how video games work. Hello, my name is Codemaster Jamal, and today we're going to figure out what makes a video game tick. Today I want to spend some time talking about the basic element of a game, which is a game loop. For anyone who is new to making games, rather it be video games, board games, or card games, this concept can be applied to all forms of games in general. And as such, it's the most fundamental term you can come to understand when trying to figure out how video games work. This is something I learned earlier on, but did not entirely understand until recently. Truth be told, there are probably better examples of what a game loop is, but to my understanding, this is the easiest way to teach everyone how video games work. Keep in mind that many of my definitions of terms are not the proper or professional definition of terms, but are my simplified versions of their examples. It would be unwise to quote me, but if you really need this for a project or an essay, feel free to use my terminology. Maybe your professor will understand you. Who knows? So without further ado, let's hop right into it. This is how video games work by Codemaster Jamal. Okay, to start off, let's make a literal breakdown of the term game loop. To begin, let's define the word game. A game is, as defined by Google, a form of play or sport, especially a competitive one, played according to rules and decided by skill, strength, or luck. A loop is, as defined by Google, a structure, series, or a process, the end of which is connected to the beginning. To encircle would be another term. In layman's terms, a loop would simply be the process in which we repeat an action over and over again. So by definition, what is a game loop? Now, this is actually hard to define because of two reasons. The video game industry is a rather vague one, and there are literally many examples on what a game loop is. However, what I have come to notice is that there isn't exactly one definition on what a game loop is, which may lead a lot of people to confusion. Many people have different interpretations to this meaning, but for the most part, a game loop can have two different meanings. The first meaning is a figurative game loop, in which people use examples from actual video games on how gameplay loops to make it more fun or entertaining. I like to call this the designer's definition of a game loop. It's how a designer can give a lot of feel to the game, such as giving feel to the sensation of actually pressing the button and making a character in the game move, going from a walking animation to a running animation, or having it necessary for the character to be running at full speed in order to be able to jump over a bridge or a gap in a level. There are a lot of examples of these types of game loops, however, it appears that there are many figurative examples of what a game loop is. I have my own example, but my example is best suited for a technical game loop, as the way I learned about game loops comes from the programmer's definition on what a game loop is. For guys like us, it's a piece of code. A technical game loop is the calculations a machine performs to allow the visuals of a video game on screen. If you're a programmer, this is most likely how you came to understand how video games work. For us, a game loop can be defined as a piece of code that calculates how many times a game can update itself every second. Every second that passes can be broken down into milliseconds and nanoseconds, and it is here that we perform our calculations. As programmers, we are manipulating the factor that a computer or a piece of electronic hardware can think or perform mathematical calculations much faster than any human being can. We are using that factor to then create a sort of heartbeat that pulses once a second. We can channel this heartbeat by increasing how many times it pulses a second or decreasing it. This also includes how many times we can update the game and what is shown visibly on the screen for players. Showing player their avatars or HUD screens is a part of what we like to call rendering. When we render, we are counting how many frames have passed and every time a frame has passed, we want to change the graphics on screen. A frame is merely a still image that is created every time we render something onto the screen. This is where we get the terminology frames per second. This is because we are rendering or updating the graphics for the game several times per second. Once again, this stuff is calculated in milliseconds and nanoseconds. That's literally a fraction of a second. That's some impressive speed. Frames per second is actually abbreviated as FPS for short, which may also confuse a lot of people because we also use that term to refer to first person shooter, which is a genre of game and has nothing to do actually with game programming. Not necessarily. Which is also interesting, and truth be told, if that's what you thought it meant, you wouldn't be too wrong. You see, first-person shooter games actually take advantage of this frames per second rule the most, especially during online gameplay. That's why if you ever died in a game due to lag or bad internet connection, it can be very upsetting. Now that we've defined both definitions of a game loop, which version of a game loop do you think is a real definition of a game loop? Post your comments below. In my example of a game loop, you can imagine a ball being passed around by four people. 
The ball starts in the hand of the first person, gets past the second person, then the third, and then finally the fourth. Once the ball gets to the fourth person, the fourth person passes the ball to the first, and then the process happens over and over again. This is what happens when you turn your video game console on, or click on an app on your phone. This starts what we programmatically call a loop. And as long as this application is running, so is this loop. In an actual game's loop code, we have a function called the start function, which is called when the program starts and every time this loop goes around, we call the program's update function. Every second that passes while the app is running, we update the application's data and we render whatever is important for the app to display on the screen. When we turn this application off, we call the program's stop function, which either saves necessary data or destroys unnecessary objects. In Unity's game loop, is similar but a little different. When Unity starts, the first function that is called is the awake function, then the start function, and then the update function, or at least somewhere along these lines. But every time it updates itself, it also calls the fix update and late update functions, which handle things like physics and other math. These are all examples of game loops. They all have the exact same concept in mind, but they each work and perform differently. They each have their own importance and their own job to handle. The concept of a game loop can actually be applied to different forms of programming, not just video games. It's often a concept used outside of actual video game development for the purpose of optimizing an application. The weird part about technology is that the video game studios is actually where most of the talent is because as game developers, we figure out ways to reinvent the wheel every time. Well, I guess this will be it for now. If you enjoyed watching the video, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button for their YouTube algorithm. Keep making games. Till next time, this is Code Master Jamal, and I'm signing out.